Hello there, Pisces. How are you doing? It's so good to see you again. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm grateful that you're here. Today, we're going to be doing your March and April. So this is mid-March to mid-April love reading. So we'll take a look at the overall energies in your uh, romantic love life, and then we'll move to the tarot to um, get some more details about any obstacles that you may have on your path or any areas of resistance or advice that spirit has for you. And if you're enjoying the content that I create or resonate with the message I'd really appreciate it if you would consider like commenting or subscribing so let's get into your reading let's see what we have here caring connection wow <laughs> you know Pisces you've had this energy of newness coming into your life you know in all of your readings so not just your your love life but the sense of you know almost like rebirthing yourself you know having a clean slate and going in all kinds of you know di new directions new paths and honeymoon enjoy the bliss of holiday holiday time together now for me the honeymoon Honeymoon card could mean that you're actually getting married and going on a honeymoon and if you are congratulations but um it's also this just this energy of taking time out to be with someone whether you're with this person now or if they're coming onto your path in shortly because it's the sense of really needing to get to know each other um, and so I love that energy because it really indicates, um, you know, a, a sense of giving time and um, caring, you know, a sense of caring about this connection. Um, and, you know, sometimes the best thing that we can do is just spend time together. You know, um, of course, you want it to be quality time, <laughs> but, you know, just giving of your time and energy to somebody else is one of the best gifts that we can give. So uh, let's see what else we have here. Denial, divine timing and cycles. A mystery on the bottom. And I love this card because it says magic, intrigue, suspense. You're entering unknown territory. So we feel like, you know, there is a sense that there could be a new person coming onto your path with the divine timing. You know, understanding that this person is on your path for a reason. And so it's worth giving your time and energy to it. It may be a connection that doesn't last the test, you know, last forever. It may not be. But in this connection, you're going to learn more about yourself, learn more about how to perhaps trust again in another person. Um, you know, all endings in relationships do not have to be painful. You know, a lot of times we think that, but it, that's really not true. Sometimes, you know, a relationship just fizzles out. Sometimes we both decide, you know, to go in separate ways, but we can end it with so much caring and compassion. And then we have denial and cycles, uh, repressed emotions, rejection, unable to see below the surface and cycles, stay grounded in the now. So my initial energy here is that in the past you could have had relationships that were very difficult that ended um in a way that was really heartbreaking and broke your your trust not only in other people but even perhaps in your trust in yourself and when we break that trust what happens is we put up boundaries right because we're like okay nobody's getting in i've been hurt i I'm not going through that again. So we put up the boundaries, right, to protect ourselves. But after a time, after we've done the healing and we've gone within, it's time to kind of like start loosening the boundaries, right? Letting them be a little bit more flexible. It doesn't mean that we go from one day of not trusting anybody, <laughs> including ourselves, to trusting everybody because it takes time. And I feel like that's part of what you're going through, you know, is this cycle of you may have denied love completely because it's kind of like, no, I don't want to get hurt again. But it's about allowing yourself to open yourself up a little bit, right? Um, and stepping into that energy of trusting yourself and spending time with somebody, getting to know them, because that's the best way to build our trust in another person. 
you know, you could go down that path with somebody um, and then, you know, you could say, oh, you know what? Yes, it, it, it was really nice meeting that person. I learned so much. You know, they had such an interesting story. Um, you know, they, I, I, I could see myself in some of the things that they've gone through. And, you know, it could be a short-term romance. But even in that, we gain this sense of learning how to trust ourselves again. Um, and recognizing that every time we come across a connection that we like, we don't necessarily have to go all the way to getting married and going on the honeymoon, right? That we can take the time to get to know somebody in a loving and open way. And still at the same time, kind of, um, you know, protect ourselves from heartbreak. It's such a fine line, isn't it, Pisces? <laughs> so let's go to the tarot and get some more details. Yeah, Nine of Pentacles. See, I feel like you have done the healing. The Nine of Pentacles is I'm independent, I'm free, I'm working on my career, I'm building my pentacles, I have a life that I really love. I'm not really sure I need love. <laughs> um, and, you know, sometimes when we get into this energy, what we don't realize is, is that we're sending out that vibe to other people that, hey, I'm independent, I'm good by myself, you don't have to bother me because I'm just good by myself, right? Um, and down underneath, what we may want is a caring connection, right? We may really want this, but what we don't realize is that we're, we're still putting up those blockades <laughs> to love because we're coming across as this super independent person. Yeah, seven of pentacles, deciding where you want to put your time and energy, working on your pentacles, right? And taking a time out from love. There's nothing wrong with that, Pisces. Um, you know, you, you know, one of the things is, is that sometimes we feel like, you know, the best antidote to a broken heart is to just jump into the next relationship. But you're taking your time jumping into that next relationship. And kudos to you because what you're doing is you're really, uh, you know, you're you're healing your heart on a, such a deep level um, so that when this caring connection comes in, you'll be more open to allowing this person into your heart space. Okay, so let's see what your obstacle is. The death, yeah, makes a lot of sense. You're still transforming. So something has come to an end. Your obstacle or your area of resistance is opening yourself up to the next relationship. I think you're ready. You may not realize that you're quite ready. And once again, it's just like putting your big toe into the water. It's not like you have to take a big leap and cannonball into the air and then go, you know, right into the deep end. It's like you're, you're able to wade at least, you know, get up to your ankles. It's, it's about understanding that this is part of the process. Um, six of cups, you're still perhaps thinking fondly of somebody from the past, kind of wondering, are they coming back? That could be part of this, you know, block is that you don't want to start something in case somebody from the past does come back. But once again, you know, we have to embrace our own journey. We're all in charge of our own journey. And there's this sense that you're doing a really good job of taking care of yourself, of building your independence. But one of the things that we're here to do is to experience love. If this, uh, I shoveled already, if the person from the past truly wants to come back, they're still going to come back, whether you're in another relationship or not. Holding space for somebody from the past is blocking you from moving on into whatever is your next chapter. So it's just something to keep in mind that when we allow ourselves to hold space for somebody that has left our life, that we're also taking up space that is preventing a new love from coming in because we only have so much space. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, do you want to fill the space with people that you're missing from the past or do you want to fill your energy space with room for new people to come into your life. So let's see what the um, advice is. Ten of Pentacles. 
yeah, you know, working on your pentacles, but also, you know, a sense of, you know, putting the time and effort into building the life that you want, you truly want for yourself, not just financial security, which is true here, but also the entire life that you want. You know, keeping your focus on that, taking action and taking actions that are in alignment with who you want to become, right? Because we're all on that journey of, you know, progressing to the person that we are becoming. Um, once again, when you're, you're holding space for somebody from the past, the problem is, is that you can't move forward because we're, you're not progressing. You're not putting your focus on who you're becoming. And you may not know, right? I mean, we don't know who we're actually becoming, but every time we make a choice, we can make a choice for who we are becoming down the line. Um, holding space for somebody that is no longer wanting to believe in us, right, helps us to stay in that that mentality of not believing in ourselves. It's about stepping into believing in yourself and believing that the life that you want, it, it, you can manifest it. You can bring this in. Really lovely energy. Queen of Swords, finding that clarity. Still working on your pentacles. <laughs> You're working on your pentacles and there's nothing wrong with that. You're starting to get the clarity about, you know, I, they're drawing this one, you know, that life is a mystery, that you may be going down a path that, first of all, you never thought you'd go down, right? And second of all, that is kind of mysterious, you know, so it's maybe a little bit frightening, but, you know, um, Going within, listening to, you know, your intuition, talking to your spirit guides and your angels, trying to find your way through this is going to help you to get closer to this caring connection. Really lovely. Okay, so Nine of Pentacles, we have the King of Pentacles, a Wheel of Fortune, Two of Pentacles, Queen of Swords. So we have the Queen of Swords twice. The Queen of Swords is focused on who she is becoming, the future. She's not looking to the past because the Queen of Swords takes the sword and cuts out everything that no longer serves her needs, right? So that is part of the process that you're going through right now is this a cutting out of anything that is not in alignment with where you are going, right? Um, you know, in this one, she has the sword up, ready to chop out. This one, she's staying focused on the future with the telescope, right? So it's this energy of... When you ever slip into thinking about someone from the past or what you're missing in your life instead of what you're looking forward to in the future, then what happens is that your energy is being pulled back into the past. In order to move forward, okay, there is this sense of finding your own stability, keeping your eye on the prize, right? And then allowing the wheel to turn in your favor. I do feel like right now your um, material life, right, is going really well. So, you know, sometimes when that's going well, we go with the flow, right? The cycle, it's kind of like, okay, you might be for some reason right now making quite a bit of money or really climbing up the ladder in your wherever you work or launching new projects and everything seems to be going your way, right? So sometimes we do. We just want to ride that wave for a little bit um, and perhaps, you know, put romance on the side. But one of the things is, is that when we're looking to have romance in our life, either now or in the future, one of the things that you can do is just start opening your heart to even strangers on the street, you know, the cashiers, the people that you work with, just having a more open heart um, will help you to practice that for when this person does come onto your path. Okay, so let's see what we have with the death card. Yeah, lots of healing. You're doing a great job on that. Six of Wands here, overcoming any trials and tribulations of the past. This is your obstacle. 
is cutting out. Once again, we have this sword's energy. In order to heal what has occurred in the past, we have to drop the burdens of the past. It is the 10, right? You have two 10s. You're at the end of a cycle. You're about to start a new cycle. And it's kind of like, in order to start the new cycle, the big thing you have to do is say, close the chapter, close the book, close, you know, the, the, curtains on whatever happened in the past you know doing that final chopping with the sword of cutting out anything that no longer suits your better good um and and just recognizing that you know sometimes that's easier than others right um especially for you pisces you know um your feelings your emotions can come up but every time you feel like you're slipping back into that energy of the past or of somebody you're missing, um, just, you know, get out your telescope and start looking at the future. You know, honestly, you could just like, you know, take your hands like this and put them up to your eye and go, yeah, there's my future. I'm going for that, you know. Um, you know, do something physical, uh, turn on some music and, you know, just dance some, you know, good dance music, get your body moving so that you can try to release that energy as quickly as you possibly can. It, it's not that you want to deny your feelings about losing something from the past, but it's also about, helping those those feelings to move on, you know, to uh, release them and to get back into a positive vibration so that you can focus on the future. Okay, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, judgment card. Yeah, I think that there is something about, you know, somebody coming back from the past, but it's about you also stepping into this energy of judging it. There could have been somebody from the past that kind of judged who you were, especially with so many pentacles coming out, like who you were based on how much money you made or what your occupation was, or, you know, you may have had a job in the past that was something more in alignment with what your family or friends or society wanted for you. And now you've made a big change in your career, something that's more in alignment with who you want to be, you know, more independent thinking. So there is this sense that, you know, with the Ten of Pentacles, uh, the Six of Cups, and then we have the Judgment, it's about, I feel like for some of you, it's also about taking a look. Like, I feel like you did that in your career sector. Now you're doing it in your love sector. It's kind of like, you know, um, a lot of times when we want to have success in our love life, we have to first find success by ourselves in like our work life. Um, and it's not about like making a lot of money. You know, it's about feeling really good about what we're creating. That helps us to build some a belief that we are capable of so much, including love. Because love is like the highest level of emotions, right? Um, and it takes a lot of vulnerability. To get to that part, we have to feel really confident about ourselves before we can really enter into a love relationship that is really deep and emotionally intimate. So I feel like there's something here about maybe you're finding that belief in yourself through your work. And now you're trying to um, get that inspiration to also have it in love. Really interesting. So you could have, you know, for this, it won't rec um, resonate with everybody. But for some of you, you may have had, you know, come from a family that thought, okay, you have to have this kind of career, you have to make this kind of money, you have to have this kind of education, you have to marry this type of person, right? <laughs> and you're kind of like, okay, <laughs> and you followed suit, right? Because that was what was expected from your family. But now you've break, broken out of the box, okay? You've broken out of the box, and I feel like you have transformed your career life or are transforming it. You could be still doing that with the death card here, still working on that, transforming, stepping out of the box of what your family wanted for you in your career life. But it's helping you to build yourself confidence in yourself so that you can make those same changes in other areas of your life, including your love life. Really interesting because I do feel like I see a lot of people that kind of 
go that path once they make one big change and they gain like their momentum, they can start seeing the clarity, they can start building their own confidence, then all of a sudden, okay, I want to try in another area of my life. You see that sometimes with people that have a, a tremendous makeover in perhaps like their physical body, you know, like somebody that was kind of like a, a coach, uh, uh, <laughs> a couch potato. And then all of a sudden, you know, they become very athletic and very fit. And then that confidence that they could transform their physical body goes into other areas of their life. Okay, so let's see what we have with the Queen of Swords. Yeah, I feel like there is this energy. You're coming into this knowledge that the only thing that's holding you back is yourself and um and i i know that you know that may sound um kind of harsh um but it is the truth no matter what well, what we want to do is deny that we want to say it's our family it's our loved ones it's uh, our spouse our children our life situation the part of the country we were born in or the world right it's kind of like we want to deny the fact that we're the ones that are holding ourselves back but the truth is i think that you have already recognized that that you know that is where your clarity is coming that you know following the suit of perhaps what other people wanted for you following the suit of trying to please other people whether they're family society whatever right it was holding you back from being the person that you truly wanted to be it's taken a long time for you to come to this realization but you've realized it and now that you have this wisdom this clarity you can um move forward and understand that okay i may not know the whole path in front of me that's okay i'm getting the clarity as i move along this path once we come into that recognition recognition that you know we are kind of like moving this that it is a mystery but that it's okay just because we don't know the whole path doesn't mean that we don't go down the path right because the path helps us to uh, evolve you know um, as a soulful being. Really um, nice. Okay, am I willing? You are on the edge of something great. Oh my gosh, I am not surprised. That's what this is all about, right? Okay, yes, there is risk, uncertainty, and imperfections ahead. See, you know that though. You know that. Failure is certain and vulnerability is a requirement. You must be brave and trust yourself more than ever before. You will reach the dream, but you must stretch, stretch yourself into a whole new level of belief and willingness in order to move forward with courage. But that's what you're doing, right? Because with the Hierophant, that's your belief. You're getting inspired. You're believing in yourself so you can take those steps forward. Today's soul action, be brave, follow your heart's compass, and lift the lid on your own dreams. Today's mantra, it's possible. And, you know, I know that this is your love reading, but I feel like, you know, some of you are like, well, where's the love? <laughs> and I'm sure there'll be some comments. When are they coming, right? Um, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming when you step into the belief that you can have a true love connection. Somebody that is at, you know, that, um, that can be emotionally vulnerable with you and that you can be with them, that it is a true soul connection. The person can't come in, and I'm not saying you're not going to date and you're not going to have some romance in your life. I'm not trying to bust that <laughs> bubble. But the true caring connection will come in when you truly care about yourself and about the path that you're on and understand that, sure, you may not know the whole path ahead, but you do know you're excited because you're stepping into your power of understanding that, there's nothing that stops you except yourself. You're coming into that realization that it's not other people or situations that prevent us from following our dreams, right? It's only, am I willing? Am I willing to do it? Knowing that there will be failures, there will be obstacles, but all of that is part of the mystery <laughs> and the journey. 
So really lovely energy there. Very spiritual, you know, it really is. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Time. You are trying too hard. Give it time. I do believe in that. Um, I feel like, you know, it is sometimes like when we get one area of our life going well, then it's kind of like, oh, well, that was easy. You know, once we're through it. Oh, that was easy. Oh, I'm, I want to transform my whole, you know. It's kind of like you you do a makeover in one of your rooms of your house and you're like, oh, that was fun. That was, you know, once it's done, right? When you're going through it, sometimes it's not. And it gets done and everybody likes it. You're like, oh, that was so easy. I'm doing the whole house, okay? Well, <laughs> no, you don't renovate the whole house at one time. You do one room at a time, right? And, um, and so it's just embracing that and understanding that all of this is on your path. This is all meant to be, you know, really lovely energy. Um, so anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, Pisces, I do do personal reading. So if this is something you'd like to go into deeper uh, for you, if you resonated with this, um, the link is in the description box below. And um, I am so thankful that you joined me for those re these readings. I'd love to read your comments. Please consider liking or subscribing. And I hope to see you again really soon. Much love and light to you. Bye for now.